Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how I made these robin and branch lino prints and how to make them to cards. The things you will need are lino, this is rubberized stamp carving lino, and this is the normal hessian backed traditional lino. Lino cutting tools, handle, and a range of blades. scalpel, ink, I'm using Spice Marmalade Distress Ink by Tim Holtz, Cardinal and Dark Red by Versacolor, a lot of wet wipes, permanent marker or pen, tracing paper and a soft pencil which I don't have here and optionally you can also have a spoon or a brayer for pushing the prints down onto the paper. So first of all you want to choose what your subject matter will be. I would recommend something that is very recognisable and simple but also has very few colours. Robin fits all of this um, with his orange chest and, and brown back. It's very recognisable and perfect for Christmas. So here is a sketch. I used a reference photo from paintmyphoto.com. Um, my design is going to have a gradient so I will be using red and brown ink but if you want to you can do it all in one colour. Um, I would also recommend playing around with composition. I raised some of my working here, but um, I wanted to include some sort of branch and berries because I thought that just the robin on his own was going to look a bit plain. I noticed when I was drawing that my robin came out a little bit too big, so it wouldn't fit snugly onto an A6 size card. So I popped this into my scanner and reduced the size by to 80%. Got this image here, which I then traced with tracing paper. Tracing paper noises, like so. And then I applied this to my lino, like that. And then used a ballpoint pen or anything that is pointy but not too sharp to push the graphite onto the lino. You can also do the, the tracing in ballpoint pen if you want to, but I found that this smudges a little bit on the tracing paper. I'm not sure if you can see that. So you don't want to track your hand through it as you draw. But also on the kind of faux plastic rubber lino or uh, rubber stamp carving, it makes an awful lot of mess and smudges quite a lot whereas the graphite doesn't. I'm pretty sure that using ballpoint on traditional lino is okay, it smudges a little bit but um, not nearly as much as it smudges on this rubber. Once traced I coloured my lino in with some uh, coloured markers to help differentiate the different areas that I was going to use the different colour inks on. I then used my permanent marker to outline the uh, robin and the areas that I don't want to cut so it becomes a bit more clear which areas I want to keep and which ones I'm willing to cut away. I also cut the uh, robin away from the main um, sheet of lino so that it was easy, more easy to uh, work with and rotate but I would recommend having a little bit more excess than what I have here if you're new because Lino is, well this kind of lino is quite slippery and you definitely want to be able to have a good purchase with your hands on the block that you're cutting. So here I am starting the cutting with um, my V gouge, it's the finest blade in the lino cutting blade set that I have. Um, I'm going around the edges and the main details and features of the lino stamp so that I can um, easily cut these away later on. Okay. 
be sure to take your time with it and make sure that you uh, are cutting away from yourself so that if your blade does slip across the lino it's not going to stab you in the hand um i've seen people stab themselves with with uh, with lino blades before and it's not very nice <laughs> so you definitely want to avoid that no blood on your on your cards whilst you're working Here I'm using a piece of paper um, and I'm, I have that as my background but I really recommend having something that's a lot more sturdy and solid to have your, your cutting block on top of whilst you're working because the paper is slipping around in all sorts of directions here and it's making it very difficult to um, hold the lino still. The only reason why I had the paper is because the glare from the lights um, was too much on my glass tile so it's completely unnecessary. I mean it, I guess it makes tidying up a bit easier because a lot of the off cuts um, land on the paper but it's not worth the risk of, of cutting yourself. Now remember that you don't want to cut too much right away, you can always cut more out later on once you've tested the lino print out but you can't go in and add the material back in so take your time um, and don't overcut. If you're struggling to get a nice clean cut with your uh, lino cutting tool, it might be because you're pushing too hard into the lino. You don't need to press too hard um, to get a clean cut and uh, you'll find that the blade drags a lot more if you apply more pressure and um, increase the angle that your tool is hitting the lino at. The rubber stamp carving blocks are a lot softer than traditional lino so I recommend using those if you're starting out or if you don't have um, strong hands. Now remember that everywhere that you're cutting away will be the colour of the paper. So here I'm cutting um, the area between the breast and the back of the robin so that there will be a, a patch of, of white between those two. With the belly, all of my uh, cuts are in the direction of the feathers so that um, it helps give the, the image that the texture is of feathers and not some you know, random lines. I do want to leave a few raised areas in the belly because I don't want it to be completely white. The um, small uh, stripes of brown will help give the image that it's its feathers or um, sort of in shadow. If you're struggling to get a clean cut on narrow areas such as the feet, you can actually just leave the feet out if that's easiest for you and um, once you have printed your lino block you can go in later on with a pen and draw the feet in. I did that with some of my smaller lino cuts before. Some uh, quite small, maybe five centimetre long uh, magpie prints and it's a lot easier to do that than to uh, worry about trying to get ridiculously small uh, details in. Now I'm using a lino tool to cut around the, um, the robin's bag. I do not recommend that because it's not a very safe way of cutting excess off of the off of your print 
but um, I then used the U gouge, the one of the widest blades, to scoop away some of the um, excess lino around the bottom of the robin, so I can more easily cut it with a scalpel later on to make the um, the printing block just of the robin with no background. I prefer to cut away the excess um, background because of um, it's more easy to get a clean print this way. Some of the texture might appear if uh, you leave it behind. So here I am doing my first test prints. Um, the first one came out quite dark because I noticed that um, a lot of material was left behind on the belly, but that's okay, that's what I was expecting. So I'm going in with my new gouge again and removing some of the excess material so that some, just, just a few of, of the shadowy lines um, remain. I don't want to cut too much, I can, once again I can always remove more if I need to later. The first ba batch of test prints are purely to help refine the stamp itself and not necessarily to refine the printing process or the colours used. So now I'm inking up for my second test print. I did a slightly different technique for applying the ink just to try it out, but once again, um, refining the inking and printing process can be done later on. I decided that I want to chop off a little bit of the top of the head, so I use a scalpel to help do that. It's a lot more safe than using a lino cutting tool to do that job. And now I'm cleaning up the lino print, uh, the uh, the printing block, with a wet wet wipe and a little bit of um, disinfecting spirit, an alcohol-based thing that um, help lift up some of the um, ink that I applied with the pen, the permanent marker before. So I'm using a V gouge again, one of the finest tools, um, to add a little more detail in a few places to clean up some edges. And I'm very happy with how that's turned out. Um, I think there's only one thing that I corrected before starting my um, batch of prints, which was uh, the top of the legs. It looked, it kind of looks like uh, both legs join in one place. So I made a small incision so as to separate those two legs. So now I'm printing and trying out a few different techniques in order to get a nice clean print. Uh, this is really going to depend on what paper you use, what ink you use, and from person to person really. So just try out a few different techniques and see what suits you best. So for some prints I try using the back of a spoon to push the paper into the print, and some prints I use a brayer. But in the end I found that the best prints came from when I was using my fingers to push the paper onto the, onto the printing block. I also find that it's a lot easier to push the, the paper into the printing bo block rather than the other way around, because the paper is a lot thinner and a lot more pliable, so it can, um, I guess, creep into the little gri the gaps um, that you've made with the uh, liner cutting tools. 
So here you can see that I'm using my fingers rather than a spoon or a brayer to push the paper onto the robin. I find that it's much more effective because you can feel the edges of the robin and you know which areas you have pushed uh, the paper down and which areas. At this point I'm also playing around with composition to see what looks best. My original idea was using um, the branch that I made uh, to sort of create a frame or, or a border around the robin but I wasn't sure how well that was going to turn out so instead I tried doing one print with the branch um, underneath the robin which I like I just feel that maybe it could do a little bit more colour so I did end up going with my original idea of having a border around the, the robin with the branches. So here's a slightly different setup. This is the way that I ended up doing most of the, the uh, prints for the cards. I ma masked off um, an area with my cutting board, it can be any surface, um, with some masking tape. Um, and this has helped to help um, me position the robin in, uh, in regards to the paper. So uh, some of the masking tape is there to help align the piece of A6 paper and some of the masking pieces of masking tape are there to help align the robin and this means that for each of the prints they're, they're always going to be almost, well, almost centred. So I go on to make at least 20 of these prints for about 16 cards and I end up choosing the best prints for the ones that I'm going to stick onto, onto cards. Um, these are two of some of my, my best prints. I noticed that towards the end of um, printing my brown ink pad was starting to uh, become a little bit less pigmented, a bit, little bit less saturated. So you can see the difference between one of my first prints and one of my last ones. Um, also a note to be aware of is to make sure that you uh, evenly apply the ink to the, to the uh, lino, uh, lino cut because if you push down with the ink pad in, in one spot then you'll end up with very slight uh, square kind of marks across your print. So I like to go all over the printing block a number of times in order to make sure that, that um, everything is nice and smooth. Uh, with my branch that I made, I didn't show uh, me making that because it's, it was basically the same as how I cut out the robin. And um, to apply that to my paper, I, I applied the printing block to the paper that way because I was finding that the structure is so flimsy that whenever I was trying to push down the paper onto it, it would wiggle around. Whereas if I had the, uh, the printing block on the paper, I could more carefully control if it was going to move or slip around. So to make the cards, all I did was get a piece of coloured card like this on my cutting board and use a, um, a Stanley knife or an X-Acto blade to score the, down the middle to make it easier to fold and that gives you a nicer, cleaner fold rather than um, a kind of crease. And then I cut out my lino prints, the, the ones that I made, because they were A6 size. I cut down the edges um, and cropped it so that it would fit nicely and be framed with the, the coloured card in the background. This meant though that um, all the cards are a little bit different, so some have more paper and some have less, but that's okay, I think that makes them more, more handmade and unique. And after that I applied the cropped piece of paper onto the card by using a tiny bit of masking, not masking tape, sorry, double sided tape on each corner and then carefully aligning the, uh, the print up where it was fairly centred and then um, pushed, I pushed one corner down first and then went to the next one and then kind of brushed it um, diagonally so that there was a few like wrinkles, I guess, so where the paper isn't completely flat, and that helped minimise that. And then after that, I got a bit of glitter glue. I chose red so that it looked a bit more like berries, but you can do whatever colour you like. And um, 
my dad that onto some of the branches in random spots if you have plasters in some areas. I think that really gives it a little bit of sparkle which I think it needs. Um, it makes the card a little bit more interesting. You can certainly jazz them up however you'd like. I think it'd be quite nice to have maybe some um, metallic card in the background or a, um, a stamp with, with Merry Christmas or whatever sort of greeting you'd like. And then finally I cut some more uh, printer paper down to size so uh, that it would be more easy to write a uh, greeting on the inside. I mean, uh, this, this card is quite dark, so I imagine that it would be quite difficult to easily read black or blue ink on this card, so it's nice to have a bit of uh, paper on the inside. And that was just stuck in with a bit of uh, glue stick, this kind. I used a credit card, or you can use any sort of uh, thick card to help push down the air bubbles and uh, work the uh, glue stick there's a little bit bumps in places, that makes it nice and smooth. And I also used the edge of the credit card to push down where the, the fold is so that it uh, wouldn't buckle up so much. And there you have it! That's how I made um, some lovely little Christmas cards using a liner cut. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed, I hope that you learned something and maybe that you'd like to try this project out for yourself. Please send me pictures if you do, I'd be really interested in seeing if what you made uh, with my tutorial. If you like the video please leave a like and a comment and subscribe for more tutorials, reviews and speed paints. Thanks for watching!